Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to cover the very basics of blood supply to the anterior abdominal wall. Okay? So, of course, I'm not going to be able to mention every single little artery and vein here, um, but this should give you a good framework so if you had to go learn slightly more detail, you can go and do so. Okay, a few quick notes here. Um, in this figure, of course, the red vessels are arteries carrying oxygenated blood. The blue vessels are veins carrying deoxygenated blood. And just for the sake of clarity, if I have an artery here that has a blue star beside it, um, I've, of course, eliminated the vein just for the sake of clarity. Okay, so just know it's there, um, but the relevant structure is, of course, the artery. All right, so we're mainly going to be talking about... Uh, what is the blood supply to the four major muscles in the anterior abdominal wall? Those are the rectus abdominis, which are really the medial muscles. And then, of course, off to the lateral sides of that, we have the external abdominal oblique, the internal abdominal obliques, and the transverse abdominis. And also, just as a quick review, if we're talking about these lateral muscles, at least lateral to the rectus abdominis, External abdominal oblique is the superficial one, and the transverse abdominus is the deepest, with the internal obliques being intermediate. Okay, So blood supply, of course, is going to originate from the heart. And of course, we know the aorta is going to come off of the heart. Um, now, technically, there are two subclavian arteries, but uh, this, of course, would be the patient's left subclavian artery. So this one actually comes directly off of the arch of the aorta. Okay. Now, from the subclavian artery, we have the internal thoracic artery that's going to be descending downward from that. Okay. Now, the internal thoracic artery is really going to be confined to the thoracic cavity. It doesn't actually go through the diaphragm. All right. um, another name for this artery that you might see is the internal mammary artery, and that's really just because it's in the area where the mammary glands are. And I believe some branches of it will actually serve the mammary glands. Okay. Now, the internal thoracic artery is going to have two major branches. One of them is what we call the musculophrenic artery. And that itself is going to have several branches. And these are going to be some of the intercostal arteries. Now, the intercostal arteries run through the intercostal spaces. That is the spaces between adjacent ribs. And of course, we have muscles in there like the external and internal intercostals, but it turns out that these intercostal arteries can also play a role in supplying blood to some of these muscles over here. So that's why I mention them. The second branch of the internal thoracic artery is called the superior epigastric artery. Now, one thing important to note about this artery is it does cross through the diaphragm. And I go over this in a separate video, but it suffices to say that the superior epigastric artery and the vein that goes with it are actually going to cross through the diaphragm actually at a structure called the sternocostal hiatus. And once they cross that, then they will actually be in the abdominal cavity. Okay, so there's our superior epigastric artery. Now I'm going to leave the top here for a moment and come down to the bottom. Okay, now we know that when the aorta kind of arches around, it becomes the descending aorta, which is in the thoracic cavity. Eventually, that aorta is going to cross through the diaphragm, specifically at the aortic hiatus. And once it crosses through the diaphragm, it becomes the abdominal descending aorta. So we have the abdominal aorta, and it's descending through the abdominal cavity. And at some point, it's going to bifurcate into the left and right common iliac arteries. Okay, So let's consider the patient's left over here for just a minute. So we have the common iliac artery. Now, technically, the common iliac artery is going to, again, bifurcate itself into two arteries. One is going to be the external iliac artery, and the other is the internal iliac artery. Now, for the sake of clarity here, I've omitted the internal iliac artery. That's not shown. So what we're going to assume is for this uh, diagonal artery right here. The first half of it is common iliac artery. The second half of it is the external iliac artery. Okay. Now, technically, the external iliac artery is going to have two major divisions that are shown here. One of those branches, which comes directly off of the external iliac artery, this is the inferior epigastric artery. Now, this artery is going to ascend superiorly through the abdominal cavity, and you can actually see right here that it's going to anastomose 
with the superior epigastric artery, which we call actually penetrates the thoracic diaphragm as it enters the abdominal cavity. So somewhere in here, they're going to anastomose with each other. Okay? If we look at the region roughly flanking the inferior epigastric artery laterally, we'll actually see uh, some subcostal arteries. Um, these are going to be arteries beneath the ribs. Okay? And we'll see that these actually are going to play a role in supplying uh, some of the abdominal muscles. All right, there's another branch of the external iliac artery, and that's the femoral artery. Now, out of these two branches, which are the femoral artery and inferior epigastric artery, note that the inferior epigastric artery goes upward, and so it actually moves away from this dotted line, which is actually the inguinal ligament. Now, whenever the external iliac artery goes under the inguinal ligament and comes out the other side into the anterior uh, thigh compartment, it changes names to the femoral artery. So actually, the femoral artery is less of a branch of the external iliac artery. It's actually really the same artery. It's just that when it crosses under the inguinal ligament and then enters the anterior thigh compartment, we really just change its name to the femoral artery. And of course, there's going to be a femoral vein there as well. All right, now let's look at the patient's right side over here and understand that all this stuff exists on both sides. I've just drawn it on the patient's right over here for the sake of clarity. So here we have, uh, we have a femoral artery. Here's the femoral vein that runs next to it. Okay. Now we also have this artery over here called the su superficial epigastric artery. Okay. This is also going to serve some of the uh, tissues of the anterior abdominal wall, but this one is going to be a more superficial artery than these two right here. That is the two epigastric arteries shown over here. Okay. Now of note also is that we have a superficial epigastric vein, which I've of course shown in blue. Right. Now what you'll notice is that as we go from the femoral vein, we're going to move up to the superficial epigastric vein. There's going to be another vein here called the thoracoepigastric vein. Okay? This vein is, has some clinical implications, and we'll see that it actually connects the superficial epigastric vein to the axillary vein. Okay? And so the axillary vein would actually deliver blood to the subclavian vein, and then that would deliver it to the brachiocephalic vein, and then the superior vena cava which would bring it back, to, of course, to the right atrium, right? Now, why is this thoracoepigastric vein so important? Well, remember that we have two major vessels that return blood to the right atrium, if we exclude the coronary sinus. We have the superior vena cava, which returns blood from the superior part of the body, so the upper extremities, and then, of course, the head and neck and upper, to upper uh, thorax. And then we'd also have the inferior vena cava, which ascends upward through the abdominal cavity, through the diaphragm, and then uh, ultimately up the thorax to the right atrium. Now what would happen if we had a blockage of the inferior vena cava? Okay. Um, that wouldn't be very good because uh, we wouldn't be able to effectively return blood from the entire lower body. And since that's already fighting gravity, we'd have some severe pooling in the lower extremities and eventually we'd probably die from it. Um, now, it's, it'd be very difficult to have a total blockage of the inferior vena cava. Um, so we're really talking about partial blockages. But if we did have a partial blockage of that inferior vena cava, then this anastomose right here, which is the thoracoepigastric vein, becomes extremely important. Because if we have a partial blockage of the inferior vena cava, then we still have to return blood to the heart. And so any blood down here from the lower extremities can actually be returned to the superior vena cava through this thoracoepigastric vein. Okay, so if you're talking about blood from the legs that needs to return to the heart, it'll come up through the femoral vein, go through the superficial epigastric vein, and then through the thoracoepigastric vein to the axillary vein, subclavian vein, superior vena cava, and then of course it's back to the right atrium of the heart. Okay, so that's an important anastomose, venous anastomose that is, in the event that you had a partial blockage of the inferior vena cava. If it became blocked and you didn't have this anastomose, you're in serious trouble because you would have a very hard time returning blood back to the heart uh, from the lower extremity. There is another anastomose that we'll talk about in a separate video. All right, so now let's talk about some of the blood supply to these muscles. And we have four major muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. We have the rectus abdominis, 
the external abdominal oblique, the internal abdominal oblique, and the transverse abdominus. And remember that these last three, two, three, and four, these are going to be on the lateral sides of the abdominal wall. So kind of in this area over here and then over here. Really the only medial muscle that we have is the rectus abdominis. Okay. Now to start with the rectus abdominis, its blood supply depends on where you are. So if you're in the upper part of the rectus abdominis, the blood is going to be supplied by the superior epigastric artery. That makes sense, right? If you're in the lower part, it's going to be supplied by the inferior epigastric artery. And then some of the lateral parts of this are also going to be supplied by some of these uh, lower intercostal arteries, which remember arise from the musculophrenic artery over here. Next, we're going to look at the superficial muscle of the lateral anterior abdominal wall. That's the external abdominal oblique. So if we're talking about the upper part of that muscle, it's going to be supplied by the lower intercostal arteries right here. Okay. Now, the lower part is going to be supplied by some other arteries that we did not mention here. We don't have time to go into all of them. But the lower part of the external oblique will be supplied by the deep circumflex iliac artery and the iliolumbar artery. And just based on the names there, so iliolumbar, we're talking about the ilium and the lumbar region. That's going to be over here in the lower part. Also, deep circumflex iliac artery, iliac is down here, that implies that it's going to be lower, and so it would make sense that they supply the lower part of the external oblique. And then if we're talking about the internal abdominal obliques and the transversus abdominis, those are really going to be supplied mainly by the subcostal arteries. Okay? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of where these blood vessels are and their significance. And then also, based on their location, you can understand uh, why each muscle is supplied by these various arteries. Okay? So make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.